Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean E, and in today's video we're going to be discussing what the converse of a conditional statement is. So suppose we have a conditional statement, just a generic one, if P, then Q, and we want to figure out what the converse of this statement is. Well first, let's write the original statement in some shorthand, which is P implies Q. So what is the converse of these statements? Well, to find the converse, all you have to do is switch your P and your Q. So the converse of if P then Q is if Q then P. So then your shorthand, similarly, just switch your P and Q and you get Q implies P. So for some of you, that might be enough. If any of you want to see an example, stick around, and we'll go over a couple right now. So first, consider this statement. If it is raining, then the ground is wet. And we want to find the converse of this statement. First off, we want to identify our P and our Q in the statement. So P is, it is raining. If P, then Q. So the ground is wet is the Q part of the statement. The ground is wet. So that's... P, it is raining, implies Q, the ground is wet. So now we want to find the converse uh, of this statement. And like I said, all you have to do is switch your Q and P around. So if we write that, um, remember P is our light blue here, it is raining. So that was our if, now it's going to be our then. So then, it is raining is the then part of the statement, and that's over here, implied by Q, which remember is pink, the ground is wet, that was the then part, now it's going to become the if part. So if the ground is wet, then it is raining. So that's Q implies P. If the ground is wet, then it is raining. That's the converse of if it is raining, then the ground is wet with some color coding that I think you found helpful. I hope you found helpful, excuse me. I think it helps. I was going to do another example with some mathy stuff, but I think this, this just about clears it up. Um, so all you got to do, you have your if P, then Q. Just switch them around. You get if Q, then P. If it is raining, then the ground is wet. If the ground is wet, then it is raining. Of course, um, Notice that this first statement, pretty much true, if it is raining, then the ground is wet. Of course, you could get into specifics, well, where is it raining, where is the ground? But generally, if it is raining, then the ground is wet. That's a true statement. If the ground is wet, then it is raining, not true. Not necessarily true. Uh, you know, you don't know how the ground became wet. Someone, um, there's a number of ways. We'll not get into it, but there's a number of ways. So. The converse of a statement doesn't always uh, hold the same truth value as the original statement, um, which is important. But I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any questions or anything you want clarified in the comments, or if you would like to see some mathematical examples of uh, you know, taking the converse of something like the Pythagorean theorem. I'd be happy to do a video on that if you'd like to see it. But I hope that helped. I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet.